Hello and welcome to what is the last of the battles being looked at by the series, but not the last in the videos. And I will record the answer to the questions on Friday because I realized very quickly if the 1915 one was going to be an hour long and therefore probably generate quite a fair number of questions about Admiral Beatty and Von Hipper and their performance, then it would be kind of unfair for me to record the answers to questions today because uh, people would have barely had a chance to write them. So the questions will be done another day. Friday, probably. Because I've got other things I've got to live tomorrow. But I really did want to get this one done today. And it very nearly didn't get done, honestly, because uh, I've just general work which just built up. It's going to sound funny, but I teach Monday to Wednesday. And so the uh, that's the, my contract at the moment. And so things build up between Monday and Wednesday. And then on sort of Wednesday afternoon, I'm trying to catch up with all the stuff I haven't done already in the week. And sometimes that makes me feel quite bad because I don't get the catch up because I have bad emails come in and all legitimate pieces of work which need to be done. But they all take time. And of course, at the moment, I'm juggling building an office, which there will be probably be another video of at some point tomorrow because I've got the shelf, the shelving in place, and I've just got the shelves actually down for the, uh, for the third shelf. So here is the slideshow. As said, this is not going to be the longest. Really isn't, because you see, what happens is not that complicated. Although it should be complicated, it isn't. This is the final battle in the series. It takes place on the 10th of February. 1916, so it was 105 years ago, 105 years and one week ago on recording of this. It was the date when I did the live. Well, when I was planning on doing the live. 10th Mine Sweeping Flotilla, made up of four flower class sloops, Arabis class. Uh, were attacked by 25 destroyer-type vessels of the Kaiserlich Marine. Um, the 2nd, 6th and ninth torpedo boat flotillas. Now, fun times for it. The Germans claim they're attacking cruisers. That's what they publish. We've sunk four cruisers, broadly speaking, or at least they different accounts. They some accounts say we sunk four cruisers. Some accounts say we sunk one cruiser. The fact that you've only got fourteen prisoners uh, reached the surface from a cruiser sinking would suggest, you know, possibly you hadn't. But who knows? Let's see these Arabis class soups, which I have done before when I've done small ships for big missions, and I've talked about sweeps before, are 1,250 tons, so they are about half the weight of modern river class. Had a complement of 44 to 60. Some time, could have a complement as high as 80, but it depends on what they're doing. 44 were built, 7 were lost during the course of the war, and they were built between uh, mostly in 1915 and in commission 1915 to 1941. They served the Royal Navy, the French Navy, and the Portuguese Navy. As said, 1,250 tons. They are roughly 77.8 metres long between the perpendiculars, and 81.6 metres long between overall. So that's 255 feet 3 inches and 267 feet 9 inches. They have a beam of 10.2 meters. Uh, that's 33 feet 6 inches. 
and a draft of 3.58 meters or 11 feet 9 inches, which is probably sensible considering they're going after mines. Their top speed is 17 knots, which makes the full account of this story all the more interesting. And a range of 2,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. They carry a maximum of 260 tons of coal. Yes, they're coal powered. And they have typically two 4 inch or 4.7 inch guns and two 3 pounder, that's 47 millimeter, AA guns with some variants on those, on top of those systems. In simple terms, they are really not what you would call a major surface combatant. In fact, honestly, the 30mm cannon on the modern river class arguably is about as potent as what their weapon systems were. Although their systems had the potential for being more potent. But I will expand this so you can see them before we click into the next slide. It's a sloop. It's a very small ship for a very small role. A very critical small role. But a role which requires a small ship. And yes, there is no picture of HMS Wisteria, Arabis, HMS Buttercup, HMS Poppy, or HMS Elysium. Um, and there's no pictures I could find, so I'm having to use one of their sisters, HMS Wisteria. Which does annoy me. So here are the forces. Lieutenant Commander Robert Raymond Hallow Hallowell Carew in charge of Arabis, Elysium, a Buttercup, and Poppy. Basically, he sees the Germans coming and he tries to make for the coast to get his ships away. He covers the withdrawal himself uh, in Arabis, that's his ship. And 56 are killed and 14, including the commander, are captured which gives a crew of about 70. Not unusual for that in some mission. Kaiserlich Marine have put forward under commander Commodore Johannes Hattog. Ships, 25 destroyer type vessels of the 2nd, 6th and 9th Pedo flotillas. Losses, unsurprisingly, none. So here's the battle. Arabis, along with the other three sloops, uh, were engaged in sweeping a clear channel east of Dogger Bank, um, for, uh, largely for fishing boats to come up and use them and trawlers. They were sighted by the German torpedo boats on their own sweep. Uh, when the British sloops were first sighted, the Germans actually thought that they, the new Arabis class vessels, which they could identify, um, might be cruisers. They thought they were powerful cruisers, in fact. But the Germans decided that with their superiority numbers, they would engage anyway. As said, uh, Hallowell Carew decides immediately on seeing the Germans that the only chance for his ships are to flee. Let's be honest, their destroyers are a lot more powerful than his and should be able to overtake his sloops. But he covers the, uh, the, uh, the escape. They, Poppy, Buttercup, Elysium, and Arabis go up to full speed, but it seems to me he hangs back from the accounts I'm reading. He's, he's the leader of his flotilla. You would expect him to be in the front, but for some, uh, somehow he manages to make sure his ship's at the rear, covering the withdrawal of his ships. Arabis is attacked and caught and engaged by three of the German torpedo boats. <laughs> and well, it doesn't get much better from there, three with the British or the Germans, because after Abyss is, as I said, was attacked by three the torpedo boats, she fights them off, and then she's attacked by six, and they sink her by torpedoes. 
say. The German destroyers win. Surprise, surprise. Um, the Germans official, uh, as I said, the claims. Some newspapers say they sank all four. Some claim they say they sank one. Officially, they claim they sink two of the new cruisers with with torpedoes. Uh, the British Admiralty responds by just explaining the truth. Um, it's quite simple, really, the British Admiralty's response. Uh, here are the 10th Mine Sweeping Division. And no cruisers were involved. Although, to be fair, after it takes place, The Battle Cruiser Fleet from a side, the 5th Cruiser Division, and plus some extra elements of the Grand Fleet are sent south. And the Harwich Force are sorted. Basically, the British go, You came for our light forces, we're coming for you. They find no German light forces, and they come back, and unfortunately, HMS Arafusa, the light cruiser of the Harwich Force, is hit by a mine that have been left by one of the German submarines on the way back in, and she is lost. So, technically, the Germans do get their cruiser. Now, I was trying to look up exactly what destroyers were that the Germans had in this battle, and... Finding decent sources about German destroyers in World War One, decent sources which I can cite academically and would use academically, is nigh on impossible. I mean, seriously. If I could actually do decent German, I would probably be going and trying to do them. And I was trying to look from some German linguistic ones again. Using Google Translate and my um, ability to translate engineering. No. So here is a generic German destroyer, SMS V-43. Twenty-five of them versus four. Here is the thing I don't understand, and actually, I would put this on the level of BT at Dogger Bank in the first time round, because if we're talking about the 1915 belt, my main question is how, in the name of all things, that the British not managed to sink one of the German ships. In this battle, there is no earthly reason on earth that those sloops should have got away. Max speed 17 knots. These are not World War II era black swans, which in that scenario, I'd put my money on the black swans taking out those destroyers if they'd been in the set against the same ships. This is a full on. These are World War I sloops. As near as you can get to what World War II would be called corvettes as possible. They are cheap. They are cheerful. They are barely armed. The Germans must have thought the cruisers were a long way off when they were attacking them to think they were cruisers. All I can explain it by is that they saw this and thought there was a free stack cruiser and didn't realize that was the bridge. I have no idea. Um, there is no earthly way any of the British ships should have survived, but they do. Which speaks great things about them. Huge things about their handling. But it also speaks to the general timidity of the German war machine. You have this with Hipper's engagement with the Grand uh, with the Battle Cruiser Force. You know, honestly, 
he's against BT. Yes, BT has the numbers, but Hippa has the ability to communicate in coherent sentences, which he does a lot. He communicates an awful lot, yes. But in the ISIS way, whilst that is a handicap strategically, once you're in battle and the enemy already knows where they are because they can see you, it doesn't matter if you're communicating non-stop. They already know where you are. That's not really going to change things. In fact, that becomes a help. In fact, the only time Hippa does seem to sh not talk enough is when he's actually in a battle. So leave that to one side. Um, in this case, I have no idea what Johann's heart dog was on. I have 25 ships. You have four. The fact that it takes an attack of three, then an attack of six to take down one. Well, yes, okay, fine. So I've used up nine of my 25 mm, torpedo loads. That's annoying. I have another 16, though, and I have three more ships. By my count, that's five per ship with one left over in case I need it. Go, hunt, take down. You have speed. Take them out. Yes, they're racing as fast as they can to the UK, but you're in Docker Bank. It's not going to be quick for a 17 knot ship to get anywhere. I suppose going home and claiming. I have sunk one ship. Yay! I am a hero! Was enough. I don't know. They are well designed little destroyers. And yes, they are kind of small destroyers. I think that's one of the reasons why the Germans do keep calling them torpedo bikes. Because despite the fact that they've now got the guns on them, which makes them technically torpedo boat destroyers, or destroyers as we call it for short, they're still all about the torpedoes. You can maneuver. You have more guns. You have better guns. You probably have better gun crews and more personnel in the first place. And, you know, they could have done a probably a freaking board in action if they really wanted. I'm not sure if it's the cleverest idea with probably um, battle cruisers by the point that they get the message race and trying to race down there and the Harwich force cranking on everything it can, but you might have got one home, a surprise. Admittedly, when in the papers you claim, this is a cruiser we captured, there might be a few people looking and going, that's a sloop. Because, let's again look at us. How much must you be squinting in what kind of sunlight and weather, because it was apparently a clear, lovely day, to think that is a cruiser? At what range do you think it is away from you? <sighs> so, that is the last of the battles. Bad bank bank. And as said, on Friday, I will... Go through the comments and ask them. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I hope I haven't been too peeved at any point. Take care. Thank you. And if you do like these videos, please do like, subscribe, maybe go down and look for the Discord link, which should be working, says Crossing Fingers. It's supposed to be a permanent link that works. If it isn't, I will replace it. Thank you. and. Take care.